and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League and the Champions League and the Europa League in this episode today. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Shambolic Liverpool embarrassed by Real Madrid at Anfield. Man City's away form takes another hit as they concede an equaliser to Leipzig. Manchester United come back at Old Trafford to get a two-win win against Barcelona and Javi Gracia returns to the Premier League as Leeds United head coach. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. Yeah, good stuff, mate. Before we get to what's been a fascinating week, uh, midweek of, of European football, I thought we'd just um, know that tip our hats to one of the, the great true gentlemen of, of English football, uh, John Motson, the legendary commentator, 77 years of age, passed away today. Um, he's one of those voices, Rob, that we grew up with. Um, as part of English football. Apparently, mm. he'd done 10 World Cups. He'd been on 10 European Championship tournaments and, and he'd commentated on 29 FA Cup finals. And I think as a kid, Rob, I can, I can always remember, like, that. his was the voice that you went out after a Cup final, you'd seen somebody play and you were mimicking the goal mm. and the, the, the goal call and the way it stood. And, you know, he was a, a, a colourful character, character, real personality, a bit of a caricature with the uh, sheepskin <laughs> and he became that guy, you know, who made sheepskins cool. But, uh, yeah, I just thought it, it would be a good time for us just to uh, tip of the hat to one, one of the all-time greats in commentary, John Motson. Yeah, John Motson, I, I mean, absolute legend, isn't he? Legend, Rob. And I think, you know, you, you, the longevity of it was, was astonishing. He, I mean, he was the only voice, wasn't he? He was the voice of football yeah. for as long as I can remember. Of course, Barry Davis was another big voice in that era, mm-hmm. but John Motson was still the guy, the BBC guy, the match of the day guy, the sheepskin coat, um, <laughs> the, the, the way. And of course, we, we didn't get to know him, or I didn't get to know him particularly well, but stories you hear about him being absolutely obsessed uh, with football. And that's what sometimes these top commentators, that's the way that they are with the game. But John Motson, yeah, I mean, that that name just is like it's it was everything. And his voice was so familiar uh, and he was so much loved. And he was he was yeah. working in the game, Rob, only the last few years. Yeah. He's, he's still at it. Ra- uh, radio, yeah. talk to what radio. Um, so sadly missed. Yeah, I mean, mm. too early, too young. I mean, it's, it's a sad day as well. Um, yeah. But John Motson, I mean, God, you talk about legends in the game of football. From our era, in an hour yeah. kind of growing up in English football, John Motson, every, every, everybody knew who he was and respected what he did. So, yeah, rest in peace, John, uh, John Motson, legend, yeah. What was interesting there, Robin, I just, just in closing, I, I meant mm. to ask, because we do a, a production call on a Thursday today, we did one earlier, and Peter Jury. Now, I mm. worked with Peter at BBC, and Peter Jury, John Champion, those kind of guys were all... Almost like students uh, uh, yeah. of John Motson. John Motson was the daddy, and they were students yeah. who were coming up and learning the trade and understanding the, the, the vocabulary and the wordsmith. And you know, Peter mm. Jury's right up there now with, with the very best in, in in the game. And I'm sure Peter would have, you know would have a fitting tribute to what John yeah. Motson meant and, and how he steered yeah. those guys very early on when it wasn't that fashionable to be uh, a football commentator as maybe it, it, it is now. But um, mm. yeah. Rest in peace, John Watson. Yeah. Okay, my friend. Let's turn it to um, Anfield with a 2-5 scoreline. So I have to say that again. 2-5 scoreline that saw Liverpool go 2 up in something like nearly 15 minutes and end up losing the game 5-2 from a Liverpool team that... It was funny, Rob, because as I, as I was thinking about this result, I was kind of thinking, 5-2 Liverpool. Now, on a really great Liverpool day, maybe still, maybe foolishly, I would still believe Liverpool maybe could do Madrid 5-2. Or on a really poor Liverpool day, which we've seen more of this season than maybe last, mm. they could beat, get beat 5-2. 5-2 has almost become a bit of a Liverpool kind of um, kind of performance, kind of school line. And mm. it, it, it it lends itself to, Rob, some of the bigger conversations that we've had on the podcast mm. and people have had about where are this Liverpool team and where will they be going with Jurgen Klopp and, and the situation as they are. What, what's the bigger picture on the... We'll talk about detail of the game and we'll talk about mm. what could and couldn't have been done. What's the bigger picture for Jurgen Klopp and the team right now? OK, so I think the bigger picture is... I, I think it was a another 
example or, or, or evidence of, of where we're at right now with Liverpool. And mm. I think it's important to say that in the league, it looks like it's picked up a little bit. They've still got great front players. And in the last game yeah. in the league, the front players took their chances and looked every bit as good as what we know they are. But it's, again, it's a realisation that the rest of the team is sadly behind what they've been, behind what they what they need to be to play Jurgen Klopp football. And it's kind of the, the, the overriding kind of uh, thought for me on this, Rob, is that Jurgen Klopp, yeah. and we saw it in the first half, that that was Klopp football. He said it himself. He said, that's us in a nutshell. Yeah. When it was flat out, high press, great energy. I've got to say, I liked the right side of the team being back mm. as it was with Trent, with uh, Jordan Henderson and with yeah, Mo Salah, yeah. Lincoln combining. I'm making notes in the first half. That's more like it. That's kind of the right side that we've enjoyed with Liverpool. Um, and that was what he wants from them yeah. all the time. Now, sadly, the second half was what we've seen. And it's been the poor side of Liverpool over recent months. It has been now. And, and with, yeah. you know, a little bit of a gung-ho attitude, flying forward all the time, both forwards going forward, midfield um defensive uh, qualities that are lacking at this level when they got run through and they give the ball away and, and midfield players from Real Madrid. Uh, of course, Luka Modric running oh, through a couple of times. Oh, yeah. Superb again. So yeah. I think it's, you know, and, and, I, and I'll throw it back to you with this question, Rob. And, yeah. and again, I, I, we, we say the same things a lot here and I end up saying this a lot. Like, does, does Jurgen Klopp continue to play his football and try and make it work with what he got, what he's got available, which is yeah. we know, we know it's lacking certainly in the midfield. I would say yeah. defensively, after some of the performances mm. as well, there's one or two that I'm not yeah. sure whether they're up to it. Yeah. Does he keep going with that, or does he? Well, hang on a minute. Like we, we got to adjust. And yeah. maybe yeah. if Trent goes forward, which he does a lot, then then Roberts Robbo, you got, you know, maybe you got to <laughs> stay back a little bit, and maybe we've got to be a little bit more pragmatic. So. Let, let's go back on that, Rob. So yeah, do you, yeah. that's because I think okay. that's the big question. I know we had a, the conference call we said today, Rob, just before, sorry, mate, just before you, we threw yeah. it around a little bit, our, our little group. And I think it was Lee Dixon who made the comment that I'm not sure he's ever going to want to do that, to be a bit more yeah. pragmatic and mm. passive, that even mm. though it might be required, Lee thought he's going to continue to play this way, yeah. particularly in the Premier League, where maybe they can still get through and get the results needed for the top four. What do you think in terms of his philosophy and should he change it? So it's a good point. And, and we did, we, we talked with, with Lee and, and Peter on, on our call today. So I felt, I felt Tuesday night was maybe embarrassing is the wrong word to say, but I thought Jürgen, it almost signaled the end of that Jürgen Klopp era with that group. I felt Rob as though he knew deep down, his team can't defend well enough. The midfield intensity is not there. And I think one of two things. Now, I think most managers have a style of play. We've seen Conte's, we've seen Pep's, we've seen Klopp's. Mm. I'm not sure that he can readjust this group to, to play what mm. group classes, maybe non-Klopp football that we've known and still be successful and still be as successful doing it. So I, I sense that he believes... I'm going to have to go again with this group. I'm going to have to make some harsh decisions. There was, there was a time at the end of the game, Rob, where I almost felt, again, embarrassed is the wrong word, but I felt a bit awkward for some of the players because Liverpool fans were cheering them because they'll always cheer the team and that's what it is. They were applauding Real Madrid players who've been brilliant, the likes of Modric and Benzema, because they're very giving of, of, to, to the football team. And I just felt it was a felt awkward, Rob. It felt an awkward position for Liverpool mm. and Klopp to be in. And that's mm. where I think there's a realisation now that this group ain't going to be. We keep hoping, we keep wanting. We all want Fabinho to be the player. We all want Hendo and, and you know, to find the mix with Bicetti, if that's right. We mm. all want, you know, Gomez to grow into the player next to Van Dijk that we've seen um, and, and, and at glimpses. But I think o over time, and you made a good point, um, I think it was last year when you said about Man City, winning the, the Premier League because of the quality of the opposition and what they can do when you do get turned over. I kind of look at Liverpool and think, maybe you get away with it in the league and you get a top four spot. I don't think you win the league winner, but I don't think when they go into European competition, Rob, playing the way that they are now with the form that they're in, they mm -hmm. can expect to live with the, the better teams in, 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 the, in the competition.
Mm. You know, I, I just go back to the start, Rob, and um, I don't know whether you saw the video. There was a video that was flying around. Well, flying around. I, I saw it. I'm not sure it was that widespread. Mm. Of the Real Madrid hotel in Liverpool. Did you see the? Did you see the video of the file? <laughs> I mean, talk about the fans did their bit. The Liverpool fans. Yeah. There yeah. was. I mean, unless again, like the source of it is probably a questionable mm. source. But I saw yeah. a video of a of a huge fireworks flipping display, <laughs> right? Literally, like this is the hotel. Like here, yeah. Or, like bang at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> two o'clock in the morning at their hotel. I'm like, blue <laughs> deck. Like must be a nightmare for it's those crazy. players. Yeah. Um, yeah. But th that's what I, I saw. And um, again, just goes back to what Real Madrid have done and how they can handle mm. that. And 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 like. We know Ancelotti, Rob, and we know that he's never yeah. going to panic. But yeah. that first half when Liverpool are flying, mm. by the way, Rob, absolutely flying. Mm. And I'm like, this is, you know, I'm sure the Liverpool fans are like, this is it. This is what we want to get back to. You know, we're we're almost, this is... And then it, for it just to fall away in the second half, it was was yeah. astonishing. I think, it, I think it's important, Rob, just to say the good stuff. And yeah. I'm kind of enjoying... I'm enjoying watching Gakpo, Nunez, and yeah. Salah. It's just mm -hmm. starting to find a bit of an understanding. I've got a little yeah. analysis yeah. this weekend on players on the rise, a little bit of analysis that we do just for a minute. Mm -hmm. And I, it's really interesting, Rob, how Gakpo is starting as a number nine, the central player, but him yeah. and Nunez are, are literally mm -hmm. so much, so, so, yeah. so much all the time. They're, they're interchanging, almost like there's no point putting a starting lineup up there with Gakpo because yeah, they're yeah. changing all the time. And they linked well, and you know, mm. and, and Salas looked brighter initially. So yeah, it's almost yeah. like they were all excited by the situation, the way that the team played. You know, you see Salas' excitement rise when they start, and then it goes starts mm. going back backwards and bad. Um, let me ask you one thing, Rob. And I might be I might be wrong here. I might I might be a little bit off here. I thought um, in periods in the game, yeah. Liverpool did sit off a little bit. They did now, what did they? Yeah, they yeah. Didn't they? Real Madrid allowed yeah. Real Madrid, and I'm. I, was I'm that, was that meant though? I'm not sure if that was meant or they were forced back there. I thought there was a spell just wow. before about 20, 25 minutes on the clock. It went quite deep and almost like looked like they were trying to contain. Yeah, which I, which I thought was all right, Rob. And I think yeah. I think Liverpool normally they would they would look with the energy to go and press again and yeah. to, can't yeah, wait yeah. to get on the front yeah. foot. I just mm. thought there was a period that, again it might be it might have just been a period of time that they that they were forced to do that but mm -hmm. I actually thought that was sensible like 2-0 yeah. yeah. get behind the ball let's mm. see what you you know because that would that was that was would what a pragmatic coach would do to try and yeah. Yeah. draw things up a little bit now mm. course, things changed in the second half it went back to to end to end and yeah. and Liverpool are still flying forward I just I just thought there was moments in there where well this is a little bit better maybe mm. Klopp's trying to to, to, yeah, to be a bit more yeah. cautious and pragmatic. I mean, but then you've got always... to defend better, haven't you? You've got to, you've got to not make better. those, yeah, yeah, those individual errors that you yeah. know, then un unhinge all that. And we, we we talk about, oh well, you know, they made mistakes. Where if if they if they'd have gone through that period and kept it clean at two nil, and maybe you know gone in at two nil half yeah. time, we might have been talking a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. And but just back to that midfield, Rob. Before we move on yeah. a little bit, Fabinho, mm. I think I. Again, more more of evidence. Of, I just I don't know what's happened to Fabinho like the last six yeah. months. It, yeah. yeah, I mean Jordan like Henderson. Moments of yeah. inspiration, great mm. covering. His heart is still as big as ever. Yeah, and he and he got on that right hand side really well uh, a few times. I think he, of course, is. It looks like another position that needs up, updating. Yeah, and Bicetic, the the young kid, mm. struggled. He yeah. struggled, Rob. It, Initially, it, there was some good press in there, but he gave the ball yeah. away a little bit. He made a, I think it was a mistake for one of the goals where he tried to dribble in midfield, which yeah, he got, he got so careful. Out, of. Yeah, he got yeah. quite a little. So, so yeah. it, that was that was literally the midfield three of Liverpool, and again, yeah. more evidence that that area needs beefing up with at least yeah. two players, Rob, to try and mm -hmm. to try and re, I don't know, secure that area in front of that back four. Joe Gomez, Robbie Earl, mm. coming for a lot of criticism after the game, and and I think rightly so. Yeah. Back four, Liverpool. Would you? How would you address it? This back four and and the defending. It, it, are you dropping people? Are you changing the way they play? Um, what are you doing? The, the, the problem to say I'm going to change the way they play is Liverpool at the best when Trent has a bit more and and Robbo have a license, Rob. So that's mm. like taking a DNA away from what what is a massively important part of the team. 
So what I'm looking at is two centre backs who sometimes have to go one for one and think, and a holding midfield player who can drop back in there and mm. give us a little bit of protection. Mm. You talked about Fabinho, it's just not happening for him. I'm not mm. sure where he's at and the energy. Mm. Joe Gomez is probably now coming to the point where we've got enough evidence to go. I'm not quite mm. sure he's going to be a regular mm. top class mm. defender for Liverpool. Yeah, That's top just four, where yeah. I am right now, mm. you know. And, and so that might be a, a difficult decision. And this is one of the things, Rob, that, you know, you talk, we talk about Klopp and talk. I think he's, he's got such a strong relationship with some of these players. These, these are going to be tough decisions for him. Mm. And, and, yeah. and part of me not sure if, if, is he going to look forward to having to make these decisions as maybe a Sir Alex has in the past, a Wenger's in the past, who, who've had two or three years of players and been quite ruthless at times, and we've gone like, wow, you know, he's let this one go, he's let that one go. I'm mm. sure Klopp feels a different personality to me, Rob, and I don't know if that's going to play into mm. anything going forward. Yeah, I, I just like a little update, I think that we, I, I'd like to bring into the podcast, Rob, and, and the, mm. the ownership at Liverpool, and this yeah. is kind of different. Remember, there's a story came out, I think um, John Henry was speaking to a local Boston uh reporter on newspaper saying that you know we're not selling Liverpool we're yeah. actively looking for some investment but That's we're not true. selling it and we're gonna we're not gonna be there forever but we're not selling it which is I think is interesting and probably important for Liverpool fans maybe important for the manager that there might be you know if if, if there isn't a, a more of a desperation to sell the club then maybe yeah. there will be investment and will be the, mm. and maybe the, the yeah. club will get the chance to buy two or three really good players to improve this starting 11. And maybe they can go again in the summer and, and rebuild a little bit. Um, I just think that's important to mention because I think my impression yeah. was that they, it was up for sale. So, and mm. I would be, I would be worried if I was a Liverpool fan about, are they going to spend any money then? And, and is Klopp going to walk away if they're not going to spend money? Um, yeah. maybe, maybe that means that Liverpool and the ownership will back the manager in the summer and try yeah. and turn things around. So... Uh, <clears throat> But worrying times. I mean, that was embarrassing. They got they got mm, ripped. Yeah, they got absolutely yeah, ripped in yeah. the second half. Um, we should we've got to mention Real Madrid, Rob, a little bit before sure. we move on. I yeah. mean, oh, talk about a team that know have great know how and they have great experience and they have great confidence and they have <laughs> self belief, which all comes from the manager. Yeah. And yeah. it's been said on on many things that I'm sure we've watched and read that there was no panic from the manager, no mm. panic from the team. There's so many class performers in that team that. I, get, I don't know. I mean, they're not doing great in La Liga. We know that. No, no. I think no. Eight or nine points behind the Barcelona at the top of the, of the league. But still, Rob, this competition, maybe that environment of Anfield, I mean, yeah. they just stepped up. The hugely hour. impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I read somewhere about, I think it's five of the last nine Champions League they've won. You know, it's like a night when it's a, it's a, it's a big occasion. They, they, they come to life and, and, mm. and look like they enjoy it. Um, you know, their their veterans. It's interesting, isn't it? Because Luka Modric is a very different profile of footballer than, than Fabinho. But you look at Fabinho and it looks like some of his his natural attributes are starting to wane. Mm. Luka Modric just with his intelligence mm. and he's mm. quick over the ground, Rob. Mm. Those first three, mm. four yards, he skips past people. Mm. His weight of pass, his understanding. Kamaviga in midfield is, is, mm. is going to be a beast if he keeps developing next to somebody like him. And He's just, you know, Benzema, you look at him, you know, Ballon d'Or winner, yeah, but just like composure, like the, the last, maybe when you're 4-2 up away from home, you can be, but you know, he chops it, he takes his time, mm. he steadies himself, he finds the back in that. Just like know-how and, and, and quality that puts him in another level. And if you are going to have any kind of frailties or, or look to be exposed, then there's one team you don't want to face is, is, is Real Madrid because... They're still up there, Rob. They'll still be, despite maybe not playing so well and not being this and not being that, they'll still be one of the favourites to win this competition. Mm. Yeah, another player we've got to mention is Vinicius Junior, Rob, on that left-hand side. I mean, a yeah. player that, that I think we all know, mate, sadly, disgracefully, is, is getting racial mm. abuse in, in Spain when he plays, which is, you know, awful, awful. Yeah. Um, just can't understand that. Uh, but But he steps up. And is a regular performer for them on that left-hand yeah. side, again against Trent or against Joe Gomez, yeah. who went out there a few times to try and help. I thought he was superb in the game. Benzema gets yeah. the last two goals. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, 
Yeah, it's just impressive to see it. It's impressive to see it. And, um, you know, the whole team, apart from the goalkeeper, made, I mean, both goalkeepers made a bit of a howler in this game. Yeah. But the 5-2 scoreline, just summarizing, was, mm. was was a real, I mean, from from Anfield that was bouncing in the yeah. first half to the second half's kind of like awkwardness, like you said, at the end, was something mm. to see. But, but well done, Real Madrid. They go through to the next round. Yeah. Liverpool are out now. Um, Liverpool have got to try and... Just keep it together, mate, to try and get in the top four. There is still a chance in the top four. It's a lot of games left in the Premier League. If those front players can keep firing, yeah. you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna play against Vinicius, Vinicius Jr. and Benzema and, and the like every single week. So they still got a chance in the top four. Yeah, I just think when uh, what, the, the, the issue they have, and it'll be interesting because they uh, they've got a two forty five PM Eastern time kickoff on Peacock this weekend. They go to Crystal Palace, which at times is never an easy place for them, although I know mm. they've got a decent record of late there. But some when you when you've got beat five two, Rob, and you you know players watch the games just like fans and and, and others around it, you you lose a little bit of your fear factor to, to people like you know they've just got beat five. Come on, if I'm in, if you're in the opposite dressing room, gives you a bit of belief that they they can get. So it's going to be tough between now and the end of the season. Obviously, we've got the second yeah. leg to come in the Champions League, but um, you know yes, they've got a couple of games in hand on a few up there. But they've got to make sure they win those can, points. Yeah, can they go again, Rob, isn't it? That's a chance, yeah. Can they go again? Can they get the disappointment of that and, mm. and a little bit of embarrassment about that to yeah. the back of the mind and, and, and reset them their mind for a Champions League push? Um, yeah, we'll see starting uh, the weekend against Crystal Palace. Um, let's move it on, my friend. Did you take a little yeah. slug of water? Um, yeah. What we got next? We've got Man City, haven't we? Leipzig, yeah. Man Wednesday City, night Leipzig. Champions League yeah. action. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The game ended 1-1. I mean, mm. quite I mean, two different halves that tough, tough to yeah. tough to believe, Game really, when you see how yeah. much control Rob City mm. were in the first half. When they was it was they were in total yeah. control. It, it was like imperious City at their best. Mm. Maybe didn't get the goals that they 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 would have would have wanted for the football, but you know the build up play, you know, the silver pulling the strings, Kyle Walker flying down on on the one side. We had Mares getting involved. Thought Jack Grealish first half looked lively and and and, and looked short coming in from that. I mean. Not much to 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 question in terms of you know they go one and up. You're probably thinking they get two or three, and then they pretty much make this make this done and dusty. Mm. But second half, my friend, I'm not quite sure what happened. Whether intensity dropped, whether Leipzig did have a go, made a couple of changes. You put on Henrik, didn't need the sub at right back, which I don't know if a right back coming in can change that much of a game. But mm. they started to be a bit more aggressive, started to contest the ball. Um, push uh, City back a little bit, and all of a sudden, I don't know. City just got in a in a in, in one of those funks that they seem to get into in this Champions League, and it's probably why teams will still believe that they're beatable, and it's it's not their trophy to win this year, as it's not been in the last three or four years. Yeah, the, the goal was coming from them, wasn't it? Leipzig mm. in the second half, the goal was coming. Yeah. I think even the first half, they had a couple of opportunities. Um, yeah. I made a note of, um, but but the goal was certainly coming. Um, and Man-, Man City's goal came from a mistake in midfield where Riyad Mahrez yeah, it over, obviously yeah. goes goes through and scores just before the half hour mark. And second mm. half was just so different. And I don't I don't know whether Pep uh, Rob I just looked at the setup of the team, yeah. and it was a little it was a little bit more um, standard. It was a little bit more like yeah. regular. Yeah. What there's a word I'm looking yeah. for like uh, tradition, not traditional. What's the word? There's a word like normal. Kyle yeah, Walker, so a, a, yeah, a back, yeah. a back four, like a typical mm. lineup, or, or a, you know, an okay left back. You know, it's like, yeah. and Roger alongside Silva with Gundogan in the hole. It's yeah. like yeah. whether City are trying to, again, be a little bit more cautious as they as they they lead the game. They're away from yeah. home. It's two legs. Mm. City have messed up in this competition before by being maybe yeah. a little bit open. I've said it. We've said it a few times. Mm-hmm. Do you think that? I mean, a little bit, maybe a little bit like Liverpool. Like I said, like they. Do you think the fact that they are trying to yeah. be maybe a little bit pragmatic yeah. wasn't the right way? And I mean, you can't win, can you? You know, no, what I mean? like, if, if we say that, then you know, people can go back on a podcast and say they've got to be a bit more yeah, pragmatic. Yeah. We do, do the other side and say, um, I think what what Pep has to be is, and, and I, I think I said it about Mikel Arteta the other week, and it, it might sound a, a thing, we have to be who he is, he has to play with that football. Mm. Yes, you can maybe tweak a couple of things yeah. and maybe stop, but. They are going to be, are they are. They're going to win this trophy, Rob. It won't be being, being too pragmatic, making it difficult, winning one nils. They'll win it because of their football, because of their possession, because they'll stretch the opposition, because they'll find ways to get, you know, to get to those hot spots in, in, behind teams and pull things back. That's what the, the DNA of Pep and City 
and the way the game went. They've just got to do that better with, with that and get the big guys scoring up front who they brought in, who's got five in five Champions League. Uh, I think he only had one shot in this game, Rob. I was reading some of my 20 touches, which, you know, I think people get a little bit caught up with the touches with Haaland. He's never going to be a... He's not a Harry Kane. He's not a 45-55 touches guy who comes in and links the play. He runs off the back. He's direct. If the ball's delivered, he gets in and he gets his shots. Um, so, yeah, I just felt it was it was... You know, I thought City didn't didn't apply themselves in the same way that they did the first off, and that's why uh, Leipzig got back into the game. Leipzig, in fairness, and credit to them, were, were were a little bit more ambitious. I thought they contested yeah. the ball better, and mm. and you know made made it difficult at times for City. I mean, in some respects, City might think you know they don't want to come out with a one-one draw. Well, Pep was happy afterwards, Rob. Pep, Pep yeah, said he was yeah. proud of his team. Made a big and, thing. Yeah. and they're coming to Germany, you know, it's not easy. He had him on the pitch, didn't he, after just you see the scenes, and he was doing his usual coaching and yeah. probing and that. And and one of the um one of the English journalists asked him what that was about. And he said he wanted his players to have their heads up. He was proud of what they did. Mm. It's never easy coming to, to gym and football and Leipzig and getting a result. People think it's it's a lot easier than it was. Mm. Um which I thought was it was it was an interesting take and and, and just that you know, it's like a group of schoolboy football, isn't it? The coaches come on, everybody's sort of looking, staring at him and waiting for his words, which, you know, Pep does at the very top level. Let's have, I just want to have a little bit more chat about um, Erlen Haaland, Rob. And mm -hmm. what I would say is, when they, when Erlen Haaland doesn't get involved too much and he doesn't yeah. get his goal and they don't play yeah. to him, I want to mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit more in a second. It is almost like they're playing with 10 men. Because he doesn't get involved in the build-up play. Mm. He's not going to drop mm. in the midfield to dominate that particular area so they can do their build-up play. You know, yeah. it, it's still... And, and, and I think we all saw on the uh, on the broadcast yeah. his, his increasing frustration. Mm. frustration yeah. Now, we've talked about it. Many people have talked yeah. about it, Rob, about playing to his strengths. Now, there yeah. was a couple of situations and on the broadcast here in the US, CBS doing it. Uh, highlighted a few times where he's thrown his arms up in the air, he's making yeah. a run, the ball's not coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I wanted to add in this podcast was some analysis on that show by Thierry Henry. Now, yeah. we know Thierry, uh, on, of course, we played against him many times. Yeah. Or, you know, absolutely amazing player. The best Premier League player, best player I ever played against, Henry. But he's bringing some analysis to it that's super yeah. interesting. And what he said uh, this week, uh, this midweek, Rob, was that the, the, the narrative is that City aren't playing to his strengths, right? And we've said yeah. that, and most people have yeah, said yeah, that. Yeah. But what he brought to this that I hadn't hit, heard too much of is that he also isn't playing in a way that's helping City in a little bit. He's Harlan's not making not the runs. Haaland's yeah. okay. not playing yeah. in a way mm. that... And he actually illustrated with a few examples where he really should show here. He really should make that run there, but he's not. He's very, very set on mm. getting away from the ball, in between yeah. defenders, on the yeah. half turn, wanting the crosses to come in so he can attack it. And he's world, he's amazing at that. But I yeah. thought Henri made a good point. This isn't a one-way story. This isn't just City not crossing the ball all the time or not yeah. playing yeah. high balls getting over to the top, yeah. which, which it is, it is. There's a part to it, but he brought that there's two parts to this. And Erlen Haaland is the type of striker or the way he's playing right now, and he's still pretty yeah. young, that mm. there's moments where the midfield players need him. He made a really nice comparison with Karen Benzema that yeah. showed examples of, look, he doesn't always get in the box mm. to where the balls he wants it to be. He sometimes is there for the midfield players, little combinations, little one-twos, and still got his goal the other day. I thought it was a really interesting angle on it that, that basically Thierry's saying that it's not one-way street this, that he yeah. could be doing a better job, Rob, mm. of more involvement, of making himself available for his teammates a little bit more in and around the box, as well as trying to get in yeah. the centre for his goal. So mm. it's something that, so. that we should watch for, look for those runs. Um, mm. What do you think? It's a good, to point, that? It's a good, point. A good so, point. So let me, let me chip one back at you just in terms of Pep, because... You know, we, we'll look at this, from someone like Thierry with his wonderful eye of playing up front and, and playing mm. at Barcelona and, and all that. Let, let, let me just throw this one at you. So what if what if Pep Tuck sort of, let's say, semi-agrees with, with, with Thierry's um, position that really we, we, we almost become 10 men when, when he plays. We're not that team that, you know, like a Jesus or, you know... A, 
even Aguero, he didn't always like Aguero in terms of didn't no. get that much mm. involved. But let's mm. just say Pep in his head thinks, well, my 10 are good enough to play the football mm. and I'll just have him to do uh. what he, what I need him to do. Just just get me goals. Just get mm. me goals. Don't, don't mm. worry about good stuff. And, and, and the other thing I was just thinking as you were talking, and again, just come in my head, but... Hasn't Pep almost turned the goalkeeper into another defender in something <laughs> that you play back to him? So yeah. maybe he says, you know what, we, we get our, our, our extra player through. What I lose in Ireland, I gain in my goalkeeper. So I don't get as much there. I, I just wonder if there's part of Pep that probably looks at that and thinks, yeah, I get it. And he's not he's okay with it. Yeah. He's okay with that. But as long as he gets me 30 goals and we, you know, and 10 in the Champions League and we win things, you know. I'm okay. No, it's interesting. It's interesting. Mm. I, I think I think that that's a reasonable uh, assumption. What mm. you're not going to get then is is the very best of Erlen Haaland and what he can do. Yeah. But again, maybe all Pep wants from him is mm. those 40 goals, Premier League goals. Yeah, you know, yeah. and the rest of it will work around. And and mm. I, I still I still think. I mean, you look back at his goals at Dortmund. Most of them were counter attacking. <laughs> Counter attacking yeah, balls over the top, game, he runs on. Yeah. It's just different. It's a different club to mm. do that. Um, anyway, we don't want to go on forever about it. It's just I think no, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. There might be do things that we at. can pick out in games where mm. another striker might do that. He might make this yeah. run. Yeah. But I, yeah, listen, he's still got a brilliant it, 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 goals record so far. And eventually, Rob, goals and to, and, and winning the trophies will what be the actual decider of whether it's it been the right yeah. move or not. Yeah, absolutely right. All right, Europa League. Um, <laughs> it's such a big matchup. We had to wait cool. to record this it's, podcast. This, is, this felt season. Champions League ish. It felt it like did. Champions League, mate, didn't it? I mean, it, uh, it, I, it, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Wow. wow. Go on, mate. You, 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 you start on this well, one. Yeah, I, first of all, Rob, for me, was just the whole atmosphere around Old Trafford. Like, that's, that's mm. what this club is. That's how big mm. it can be. That's what mm. we've played at. That's what they've had in the past. That's what they look like they're getting back to. It, it, it was jumping, it was electric, it was all those things that, that you'd want. They got a guy in charge, Rob, who I think we've talked about it, I think affects football games mm, from the again. start, from the, from the, again, just, you know, we, you know, I always look at Steven Gerrard and, and we love Steve in that. And I always think when he was Aston Villa coach, I rarely saw him affect the game with substitutes, with changing um, players' positions, with tactics. Ten Hag is, is 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 a little master at seeing things, changing things, looking at things, finding a, a solution. Um, I just thought it was for me the spectacle of what United are and why people will always want to buy it and why it's still the biggest club, probably one of the biggest clubs in world football. Was nights like tonight, Rob, when when you see all that that's going on and you get a victory and there's teams now still in four competitions. They've got a manager who can match the ambition and the size and the uh, potential of the club. It all starts to look very, very positive for, for United. Yeah, agree, mate. Agree. I, I just, you know, the, the team look inspired. They played in mm. an inspired way today. And maybe because of the atmosphere and maybe because the conference is up now, maybe because it's FC Barcelona coming to Old Trafford. This European night kind of situation there, it did feel like a Champions yeah, League, yeah. Rob. And, and the fans are absolutely all in. They're all in on Ten Hag now. Yeah, yeah. They're they're really really behind him. Um, the, the the some of the some of the the changes again at halftime, Rob. And I want to go over it because, and I know we said it before, yeah, but it, yeah. it, it, I mean, talk about everything working out. So first half, it was Casemiro alongside Fred. It was yeah. Sancho in the hole. It was Bruno mm -hmm. right side. It was Rashford left and yeah, Vergost yeah. up front. But it's almost mm -hmm. like Vegos, Rob, is, is like a decoy, right? He starts games, yeah, yeah. He, he's, he lulls him into false sense of security, then, then, then <laughs> Eric's like, oh, yeah. okay, now, now. Yeah. So he comes out, and then the front, the whole front looks different Changes again, up, like, a, yeah. like a, yeah. to Rashford up front. Sancho then goes to the left. Anthony comes on and plays to the right-hand side, oh, and Bruno and Fred Bruno. Yeah. are back yeah. into the eights, Rob. They're back into that position mm -hmm. going forward, two of them. Yeah. With Casemiro yeah. sitting. So, you know, again, the goal... Is it the, it's the first goal? Fred, Bruno Fred Fernandes. goal, yeah. Bruno's Bruno into Fernandes. Fred, Fred with a touch. Well, there they are. They're the ones that come yeah. right through the centre yeah. in those high number eight yeah. positions and Fred sticks it away. I mean, it, again, it's like, it, it's it's remarkable what he's doing, how things are changing, mm. how players are changing, how the team is coming forward. Old Trafford absolutely bouncing, buzzing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some performances, Rob, again, 
Lissandro Martinez, by the way. Yeah. How, good, how good is he, Rob? I mean, I know we've said it a few times. I think we had him underappreciated, and, and we I seem to pick him out each week. But flip, he, he and have grown into a really, really important defender for the team. See um, what he did think, there, and that was tough on him, grown into a centre forward. With all that talk about his height, his lack of yeah. height, his grown is not really the... A bad word, but yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody was saying, money he? he can't be yeah. a centre, you know, centre back in this league at, at yeah. five foot ten or whatever he, what he, he, wherever he stands. But I also want to mention the other fella next to him, my friend, Rafael Varan, mm. came up with a great block late on mm. in the game. Not sure if it was possible offside just before the the um, it happened, but just his influence, Rob, on the club and. Somebody of standing, somebody who's been there, somebody who's you know played at big clubs, knows what it's like to win. He must just be an absolute manager's dream to have him as part of that dressing room as well, Rob. So, you know, sometimes the manager's voice in, in all situations, you can hear too much of the manager, whether you're at the top or the bottom of the league. Sometimes you need a couple of good people in your dressing room who are making sure those messages are being delivered and saying, Rafa Varane is, is that man, absolutely mm. that man for him. Mm. I think the team and, and the fans, Rob, have waited so long for this. Mm. I, I just enjoyed, at the end, the players. I, it looked like yeah. a lap of honour, appreciating the supporters, the fans. The fans are absolutely loving it. I, I just, I'm just, i just thinking it's been so long since this fan mm. base can believe in something since Sir Alex Ferguson stepped yeah. down from the manager's position. Um, there was a shot, wasn't it? I think um, Alex, Sir Alex Ferguson and right, uh, Alex yeah. Hag went, yeah. out, went out for dinner yeah. together recently. Yeah. But I, no, I, I'm just, I'm, I like you. I mean, don't we love to see big clubs? Don't we love yeah. to see big atmospheres and big games? Mm. I just enjoyed the game, enjoyed what the manager's done, enjoyed how some of these players are being rehabbed, like yeah. literally in some situations. And another, another little good sign, Rob, is that it wasn't really a Marcus Rashford night. No, it wasn't him no, who was, was no. torturing. And, and mm. I mean, he, he still had a very good game. Yeah. But there's yeah. goals from other areas. And, and I think this is something that it, it has been proved important other teams wherever mm-hmm. you look now that the other good sides have got goals from different spots and Anthony scoring a really nice yeah. winning goal yeah, and Fred as well with that midfield run that's what's mm-hmm. important it's not it can't all be about Rashford because yeah he can't he can't you know he can't yeah. be the only yeah. guy that's got to do the attacking business to get him back up into good spots in the league so great night at Old Trafford Rob and really enjoyed it I thought another really good point as well Rob that at the moment he's finding and whether this is luck or design but like interchangeable pieces that Luke Shaw can play left side centre back when he mm. needs to, Rob. He gives him mm. an option. You know, Sancho can play any of the wide and possibly yep. in the in the ten. You know, Anthony comes on, can do the similar. Vegos gives him flexibility, as does Rash. There's lots of, you know, Fred next to Casemiro today. It was a bit too yeah. last week, we thought, you know, so there's lots of interchange with Darlo and Juan Bissaka. Yeah. It's not like it's 10 or 11 and that's a team and, that, yeah. you know, that, that's it. There's interchangeable pieces and, and people pushing to get in that first team picture. You know, he's got that whole thing going as well where there's healthy competition in a football club is, is always a, a barometer of success. No, it's a good point, mate. It's a good point that they've got different spots, different solutions for different issues. And he, yeah. as a manager, seems to know when to and how to make those changes. And ne- next for Manchester United, Rob is is Sunday's League Cup final against Newcastle United. Yeah. Oh, M- massive mm. game. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna watch yeah. that game and do our next yeah, pod on the back of that. After. Yeah, um, good shout, yeah. But it's good. Good for Man United mm. today. Enjoyed that. Barcelona, what a team, what a manager. Xavi, one of my flipping favourite midfield yeah. players of all time. And they struggled to handle the intensity at Old Trafford with this Man United team that's absolutely flying. So, yeah, enjoyed that. Really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. So, just before we round off this uh, midweek potty, mate, let's just uh, have a moment to, to talk about Leeds United, their situation. Jesse Morse left. Uh, Max Caballa was put in charge of a couple of games. Things didn't quite go as <clears> is to plan. And they've now brought in Javi Garcia. I think we talked on the pod or certainly on the show last time. So they need somebody in the building. It's got to start you know, getting some accountability and leadership. Javi Garcia has been the guy who's put in charge. I've heard flexible contract, Robbie Musto. I heard. <laughs> there's a new one on me. He's got a flexible... Basically means keeps him up. We'll talk about it next season. Don't keep him up. Well, we'll, we'll see if you're the right mm. guy to get us out of the championship. But mm. obviously, um, interesting uh, signing. Maybe... Maybe not quite the glamour that some would have liked, but you know, done a great job at, at, at what they got. What they did a cup final, I'm, I'm all right, and kept him yep. in the league, and yep. um, you know, 
I read a really interesting piece about him, Rob, that came up. One of the Spanish um, journalists had spent time with him and said, one of the great things about him is he's not, and it's interesting, we may be contradicting ourselves earlier, but he's not wedded to a defensive setup. He's not wedded to this way of attack. He's not, he, he can kind of mould different players depending on what he's got. He likes to have a strong relationship with his players. He likes two way. Uh, communication with these players and that they kind of all in together. And it kind of, as I was reading it and thinking, that sounds interesting. I'm sure if that's some of the reasons why Leeds have looked and thought we've got some young players and need some help and advice and need a little bit of leadership and direction. But all the things that uh, the journalists were talking about, Javi Garcia, kind of made it uh, the kind of fit that I thought this could be interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's obvious that he wasn't, first maybe the second choice for this um job rob but yeah i yeah i like it i kind of like yeah. it when when you think about what he's done in the premier league before i think there was a yeah. uh 14th finish and an 11th place finish yeah and an yeah. fa cup final starts yeah. the next season i think they lose the first four and he's fired i remember it's walking to the yeah. studio yeah. Rob. yeah i remember walking in and saying that's the most ridiculous thing i've ever <laughs> i've ever seen Can you remember that when when yeah, we found out yeah, when we literally yeah. walked into the studio that grassy has been mm. fired. I'm like, what? what is any, we're only four games in. He just played an yeah. FA Cup final a few months before. Yeah. So I think this is a sneaky good appointment by Leeds. Another thing mm. that I, I read about Rob, about how he how he works, is that he, he works a lot on players helping everybody else on the field. So players helping other players, which, yeah. which I mean, you're meant to do that anyway. But in mm. terms of leads, if they want help defensively, then then the front players, midfield players, have got to help oh, defensively, help. May, yeah. maybe a little yeah. bit more. So mm. maybe if he works on that. Um, mm. But he's he did good work at Watford. Really yeah. unlucky to, to lose his job yeah. there. I think he had a couple of stints in jobs between. I think he's in Qatar for the, his last position. So, I mean, he's got a difficult... I mean, this is a huge game. Saturday, 10 o'clock yeah, Eastern yeah. time. Oh, Leeds yeah. entertain Southampton. Southampton two yeah. two yeah. new people in charge, really, with Ruben Sellers mm. that, that may yeah. get the job full time at Southampton. I think he probably should. Um, mm. So it's a massive, massive game. Cool. Just one thing, Robin, and there was a little bit just on the game, because we're in this weekend. Yeah. Is this an example of two clubs that wanted and felt it was the right thing to go young, young squads? Young players, uh, oh, young, young signings. Money. Yeah, but they're not, but just the teams, the the, the squads. Oh, okay. Leeds yeah. is a young team. Southampton mm. got really, really young yeah. with their new owners yeah, in yeah. the summer, mm. and they're both they're sat in the bottom two positions in the league. Just a quick line: you can't. Mm. It, it's all right in theory to go young, but is there always got to be a bit yeah. of a balance, you a need, bit of a blend? Yeah. Southampton yeah. have signed a couple yeah. of older ones recently. What do you think? Yeah, you need a bit of know-how, mate. You just need a bit of know-how. What's down the track? What's you know. What it takes to, if you have them to go to Leeds and get results. If you lead, how to make sure that you keep the fans on side and you do. There's just a bit of know how that in a dressing mm. room. I remember the year we went down and a lot of the younger players feared the games. I could, I could just sense it. Good players, technically players who, who could play way above the level were fearing what was going to happen in the next nine minutes. And I think as an older pro, it's always your job. They're like, come on, you know, if you play well, we win today. If, you know, don't lose your nerve and, and that. I think it can get to younger players. Just like yeah. sometimes people say younger players, you know, don't get the enormity of it and play a little bit free. I've also seen the other side where the enormity of it and that Difficult. kind of in, hinders people. Make, yeah, don't mm. quite get fun. So, yeah, it's an interesting yeah. shout to youngish squads. Mm. Um, but you just sense with both, if, if either of them could get ahead of steam up and get a little run going, you both kind of, you could see them finding a way out, Rob, down at that bottom yeah. of the league. Yeah, you could. Yeah, Southampton, got, they brought a couple of new uh, new strikers, yeah. African strikers come in, played up front in the last game. Great result against Chelsea. Good game. Yeah. Should be a good game for 10 o'clock. Plenty of good games this weekend. Sulemali, isn't it, one of them? Sulemali, I was watching yeah. one of the games. Yeah, he's not batting, by the way, Rob. Gets yeah, in Onoachu. Onoachu is the other yeah, one. Yeah, Onoachu, yeah. From Genk, yeah. So, yeah. should be a good game. Are you going to just round us up with the... Uh... Best of the Champions League in your yeah, so just, league, mate. Yeah, we've got other results here that we can just go over. Mm. Napoli, um, 2-0. Look a really, really, really good side at the moment. Inter Milan 1, mm. Porto 0. Europa League results. Berlin go through. Sevilla go through. Sporting go through. Um, Leverkusen, I believe, went through. Rennes, I think, went through. Yeah. Again, at time of recording, I think uh, that was the result there. Juventus are through and Roma are through. So plenty of big sides. I mean, the way that Man United play today, it's like, wow, who's going to stop them? If, right, if yeah. they have that kind of, if they keep that drive going, momentum going, yeah. and things can change pretty quickly. Um, mm. Shakhtar did go through on penalties. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. So Shakhtar went through. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Shakhtar went through on penalties. Shakhtar, yeah. sorry. So Shakhtar went through as well. Yeah. So. Mm. 
yeah, that's your other results, mate. Love it. We love the European uh, weeks. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think this back in a couple of weeks' time, I think. Yeah, a couple of weeks we get back to uh, second yeah. legs and all those, where yeah. actually in the Champions League, none of the English teams won, Rob, so they got difficult second legs. You know, I had to get it done in the Europa League with a big game against Barca. We'll be back on Sunday, that's February the 26th, so we'll review Match Week 25 with games at both ends of the tables. Leeds hosting Southampton, we just talked about Tottenham taking on Chelsea on Sunday. And then we'll be back looking at the Carabao Cup final after the Wembley final. Newcastle taking on Manchester United. Can Newcastle win their first bit of silverware forever? And can Ten Hall get his first bit of silverware as Manchester United manager? But for now, I'm Earl. He's Musty together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's good night from him. Good night. Good night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.